Our unison reading this morning is from Luke 11, verses 1 through 13. Join me in the reading of the word. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and children are in. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So now is our uh, message for the kids. And Sam, I see you. Would you rather I come to you or are you willing to come forward? He's like, okay. You're a good sport. How are you doing this morning? Hot? A little bit? Mm. So uh, today we're learning about prayer and worship with the Lord's Prayer. And I know that um, at some point, did you, did you go, go over that in Sunday school? Yeah. But I want to talk with you about a different passage in Scripture. It's, I think it's in First Thessalonians, um, where it talks about that it says, pray without ceasing. That means pray without stopping. And that always used to confuse me, make me feel a little guilty, like, how do you do that? How do you, you know, how do you pray constantly without stopping or always, always any, you know, do you have any ideas? Right? So what I finally figured out is that God is always with us, right? In spirit. So I can, I can live my life in conversation with God. Right? So when I see something that makes me happy or joyful, I say, thank you, God. When I see something that makes me sad or hear about something that makes me sad, I say a little prayer. I'll say, you know, Lord, in your mercy. And sometimes I don't even feel it. Like, I figure God knows what I'm, what I'm praying. But just something. So, and so that, that whole idea of um, that I don't have to be um, you know, on, on my knees in prayer all the time or, you know, that it's, it's just always ongoing. Does that make sense? No. So, okay, say I, like when I was in school and it was time for a test, right? And I was nervous about the test. I would say a little prayer. And Lord help me remember everything that I'm supposed to remember. And, or if I needed to be brave and I was scared about something, 
I would say, oh, Lord, help me be brave. Remind me that you're with me. Or like, you know, even if when I was your age and if I was asked to come forward and sit by myself, I'd be like, oh, God. I might be a little nervous about that, right? So I would say a little prayer as I was walking forward. Well, at your age, I don't know that I would have not known to do that. But at this point, I would. Like there's sometimes when I, there are sometimes I'm asked to do things or to step up and do things that I don't, you know, I'm like, oh, Lord, how am I going to do this? I pray my way through it. And so that's, I think, as a Christian, one of the things that we can learn to do is just to recognize that we're, God is always with us. God is always with us to help us. Uh, and, and God loves to hear our voice. So we can constantly be saying, you know, God, you know, thank you for this beautiful day. Oh, can I tell you a story the other day? There was this huge storm here in Montclair and probably in Glen Ridge too, where, where you are, right? Because you're right down the street. And my car was parked over at the, at the house next door. And there's a little birch tree that went over. Bing. And if it had gone in the direction of my car, my car went, went <laughs> right? But it went in the other direction. And I had, I went to a retreat years ago where this woman, this pastor, encouraged everybody to pick something in nature that when you see it, to, 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 as a reminder to be thankful, to say thank you, God, and, and gratitude. And I picked a dragonfly, right? So we're out there standing by the car, and I'm really, you know, and I'm standing there just saying, thank you, God, that the, that the, uh, that the tree fell in the other direction. And guess what flew right in front of me and sat on, on the earth that came up with the tree? A dragonfly. And, but, and I'm, I, you know, there shouldn't be dragonflies around here. And so anyway, so and that was like an extra special, thank you, God, right? So, it, and by the way, it's something that we grow in and learn how to do just this conversation with God all the time. Um, it's not something that, but think about it. When you're afraid, say a prayer. When you're happy, say a prayer. But don't feel guilty if, if you know, that whole of like nonstop praying all the time, that's impossible. But just to live our life in the knowledge that we can constantly be in conversation with God, I think that's what it means. I don't want to ask you whether that made more sense because of the... I don't know how else to explain it. Uh, will you say a prayer with me now? Fold your hands, close your eyes, bow your head. Dear Lord, thank you for the conversation. Thank you for the knowledge that you always walk with us, that we can always talk to you. And we're grateful to know that we're not, we're not living this life on our own. But we have brothers and sisters in faith, and we have your spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to read Luke chapter 11 verses 1 through 4, but this time from the Common English Bible because of the translation choice that they made. Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Jesus told them, when you pray, say, Father, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who has wronged us. And don't lead us into temptation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God, and let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So what was shouted to you when you would leave your home when you were a young person? Was it, you know, be good, be safe, don't drive too fast? I can hear my mother saying, make us proud. Two moms I know always say, make good choices. I've heard a pastor who would tell his children, remember, I think this is so funny, a pastor telling his remember your baptism. <laughs> right? Remember who and whose you are. There are commands in the Bible that when you think about it, our response might be, okay, but how? For instance, be saved. Acts 2, verse 40. Okay, 
how do I do that? <laughs> Be transformed, Romans 12. Be perfected. Be filled. Be empowered. The commands are such that it would be an, you know, an excellent response to say, I am here for you to do it. I will cooperate. I am in full agreement. Not sure how that's going to happen without the power of your spirit. And at the end of our passage uh, from Luke, that's what we read. If you then, who are evil, and by the way, I cannot read that. When I was a student, without thinking of this memory, when I was a student, and I might have told you this if I did, <laughs> uh, humor me. I was a student at Bryn Mawr Presbyterian Church, 3,600 members, huge cathedral, you know, and I lost my way in the passage. And the last words I said, if you then who are evil, and then a death pause of me trying to find my way, you know, and I was nervous, so my, my eyes are jumping all over the page, and my supervising pastor apparently was in the balcony laughing his little butt off. He's like, he goes, that was awesome! Um, and I'm told that um, after that they uh, paused having students read, ha ha. But anyway, if you then who are ne- evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. At the beginning of this passage, we we read the Lord's Prayer, a prayer which many of us have memorized since youth. And it starts with a command, but this one is directed towards God. Our Father who art in heaven, literally from the Greek, our Father who is in the heavens, make your name holy. Hallowed be thy name makes it sound like that's we're, we're doing that. It's a command to God, make your name holy. And the common English Bible that we read says, uphold the holiness of your name. If prayer is an exchange of wishes, which I read this week, which I think is just lovely, we exchange our wishes for God's wishes. Our wish is that God would live into one of our, the definitions of holy. What does it mean to be holy? Be worthy of complete devotion. Be perfect in goodness and righteousness. Remember who you are. Be who you are. The author of righteousness, goodness, mercy, truth, love, grace, compassion. Be our Father. I've done whole sermons on how our names for God are all metaphors. Father is a metaphor, and it's a great one. So is mother, author, architect, artist, inspiration, eagle, rock, you get the idea. But father or mother implies a relationship, a loving, caring, nurturing, responsible relationship that offers mutuality. I'll live as your child. Please live as my guardian. And then the rest of the prayer paints a picture of what that looks like. Daily provision, forgiveness, grace, when I was up in Vermont, there's a, a used bookstore that is a must stop for me every time I'm up there. And I found two books by Mary Oliver, another by John O'Donohue, a book of blessings that I, already wrote, uh, that I already own that I'm going to give to someone as a gift. And I found a small prayer book, Prayers for Daily Use by Samuel H. Miller, who I looked him up. He was a American Baptist pastor who served all over New Jersey before becoming a professor at Andover Newton Theological School. He died the year I was born. And it looked like it was owned by a former student, and I got it for a dollar. I read a prayer standing in the aisle, and I thought, you know, it's nice to hear someone else's voice, to, you know, to stretch or to maybe to put things out that I might not think of. And when I picked this little book up the other day, this is the opening prayer, and I love it. I was going to put it out in the email blast for this week, but then I decided it would be too long, so I might share it next week. But, and by the way, I'm updating it, taking out the these, the thys, and the thous. So here's the prayer. O oh God, whether a person be on land or at sea or in the air, they need you. Whether they are home or abroad, among friends or strangers or enemies, your companionship will steady them. 
whether they be sick or well, in despair or gladness, perplexed or at ease, thinking of you will strengthen them. Whether they know you or not, you will not forsake them. Your mercy will be greater, greater than their waywardness, your faith in them stronger than their doubt in you. Whether their heart is broken or their spirit proud, your mercy will guide them with patience until they enter the eternal kingdom, where all people are as children before you. Whether they have too much or too little of this world's goods for their own good, whether their reputation is better than their soul or their soul better than their reputation, whether they know much of this world's wisdom or little, you will walk with them until at last their eyes waken from their blindness and they shall see your light. Then they will be your child indeed. And wherever they are, they will be at home with you. Amen. This prayer, too, says, this is who you are, God. This is what holiness looks like. We are your children, and you are our home. But just as we are reminded God who God is, we are reminded who we are. We, at, we, as we seek for God to be holy, we, too, seek to be holy gods. Our stance in life is active and passive, and by the way, for all my fellow Greek geeks, the, the, the command there, it's an active, passive imperative. Active, you need to do something passive, but how do you do it? An imperative, the command. I'm here to let you work through me, to give bread, to forgive, to be gracious with other people's mistakes. O oh God, our God, make your name holy as we seek to be wholly yours. In Jesus' name, amen.